North America, they're a team that did not drop a single game throughout the entirety of Valor series. They are easily the best that America has to offer as a region and I can't wait to see how they do here in their second game of the Valor series. Well, let's get into it. Pick and bans underway for game one between North America and Singapore. The Aram going to be the first ban for North America. North America doing what Thailand did yesterday, sticking to standard bans. If you don't quite know what Singapore is going to pull out, you get rid of what you know might be a problem. I'm liking this, though, from Singapore. Going to ban out the Grack. It's been kind of a pop-up pick here at the tournament. It's rather quite popular. Yeah, and Grack is one of the best support characters because he has infinite CC. If you're ever wanting to stop somebody from diving your backline, if you ever want to be able to shut down, pin down characters, Grack is the one to do it. He's a little bit tricky, though, because you need to have follow-up, and that requires coordination. And as oftentimes we saw it paired with the Slims, because it allowed for the easy spear to be locked on for North America, America though. Going to be the Flash for the second ban. Flash coming out as a very powerful mage and one that was run to brutal efficiency over on uh, the Singapore side yesterday. Tainted Ones, I believe, took the helm there, and he was so good in those team fights with this CC. Well, for Singapore, going to be banning out the Teamy. Ooh. That's a more of an expected one, and that kind of starts hitting at Res. I would say, yes, that's a ban against Rest, but also 8, well, 8 3 one rather, ran a very, very good teamy. They are not running him here today. They've subbed in Aris mm. in their place. I want to know if that's an intentional play of we know we have to face up against Rest, we bring in a substitute. Or North America, though. Final ban coming on through the Malak, which has been either picked or banned this entire time. We've still got about four heroes that can lay claim to the 100% pick or ban for Singapore. Last one's going to be, of course, the Superman. We have seen a Superman played, and I believe it was an excellent reminder of why Superman mm -hmm. is normally banned. <laughs> when it helps you uh, take a game off some term tournament favorites, uh, you're going to likely have to ban that out if you are on the red side. But for North America, TJ, what should be their priority here? What do you want to try and claim with the first pick? I want to see something uh, very early on. I'd like to see them pick up something for rest. Like you say, he's been struggling. I want a good support in his hands. I also want something for Pew because Pew is their jungler and Pew is one of the more aggressive junglers in the entire uh, AWC. If he can get a good character to support that, like say Alindis, that's massive. That would be very nice for Pew. Again, the Korean coming on over to North America and also bringing that play style from the region oh, because absolutely. at the moment, Pew sits around second overall in damage taken, damage dealt when it comes to junglers. And that just shows that he's constantly taking fights. Many junglers like to sit more passively inside their own jungle and farm up for much of the early game. Pew, from a very early point, is involved in these fights dealing damage. With a Lindis, he's going to deal a lot of damage fairly early on. All right, Zenyal getting locked in here for Singapore and oh, the Omega. They get both Xenial and his potential counter, Omen. That means that their split lane is going to be terrifying because you can have the Omen just chewing through towers, I assume, from bot, and then you'll have the Xenial up top, instantly able to rejoin any fight should he get split up. Or North America, though. Gonna go ahead, lock in the Grixie oh. for themselves. And the Alice gonna be also locked in for North Grixie, America. Grixie, Alice, now that's a combo. Do you like magic damage? <laughs> do you like combinations that help shred apart a team yes. at a choke point? How'd you know? Do massive AoE, literally throw a moon at you? I, wow, that sounds deadly, and it is. It's, little, it's very deadly. That's oftentimes how? the highest mage with damage per minute. How many times this entire AWC have we seen a Crixie picked? Because it's something insane. I think it, at it, it, it's, this would make it 14 out of 20 games. That's Either a, pick or ban. Wow. That's very high for a character that wasn't even regularly chosen in any of the regions prior to the AWC. Singapore, they're going to respawn here with the Liliana and, of course, the Joker. I like Liliana because we saw Tainted Ones on the Mage really excel with the high mobility flash. Liliana is the second highest mobility Ooh. mage. I am a bit uh, concerned oh. here for North America. The Chugnar and the Scud both getting locked in here, TJ. I'm, a, I'm concerned about okay. the Chugnar because this would be his 10th game played across the tournament, and he sits about at a 30% win rate. Yeah, we haven't seen a ton of very powerful Chugnars, but here's how this set works. 
You have MTS and Rest kind of power farming, or it's MTS and Pew, power farming Pew. Uh, because he's going to have the Lindis, presumably. They're going to put him in the jungle, and you'll put the Alice with him. And that's probably actually going to be Rest, not MTS. I'm getting mixed up because the characters are in the wrong order. Uh, it's but, all good. It's all good. But the point is, you get the Alice constantly following around the farm in the early game. And then you run the Chargnar and the Scud, each in split lane. Probably Chargnar, bot, Scud, top lane. And when you can do that, you can rely on neither tower to fall, and that's enough. If you can play defensive throughout the early game, this composition will excel in team fights, especially once Pew is amped up towards the late game. You're gonna have Rest able to combo very well with Sleepy and the two front lines, Charknar, and of course that Scud will do such a good job of preventing the dive. For Singapore, though, their final pick came on through. It was the Slims who are going to have the long range spear to find the stuns. But not a lot of follow up, you could say, because usually you pair that up with the Grack that can just bring them back into the rest of the team. I think this is the first time actually you don't see that pairing with the Slims. Slims is going to be fun to see because it's all on the stun. Without the combo, without the follow up, he's going to have to have somebody else diving in. Maybe the Omen is, takes the lead there. That, yeah, that's that's a good possibility. And another one, Omen, has been extremely popular so far. I believe he's also one of our pick or bans when it comes to the tournament. And it's always been a power, powerful pick. We've seen it la last night with China and Thailand wildcard, where they were able to exert a push, even dive underneath a tower, take it against two members whacking away on top of the Omen. So that gives Singapore you know, some options when it comes to this game. It feels like for NA, there might not be as many answers available. Omen across nine matches has a 77% win rate. That's a very, very high win rate for a split lane that's been as active as that one has. We're going to go ahead, get into game one between North America and Singapore. Remember, the winner of this series will advance on to the knockout stage. North America going to make their way toward the top side of the map, steal away the Mike Golem. A little bit of a reset here coming out from MTS as he's looking to delay Singapore as long as possible. I really, really like the fact that Singapore are instantly responding back. They have exactly the same challenge that North America does, and this is what we were looking for. Yes, NA is going to be aggressive, shut that down, or respond in kind. Up toward the top side, though, El Preso going to be looking to farm away. Three members of Singapore down toward this bot side, maybe wanting to try and find some pressure early because you want to try and pick up that early Abyssal Dragon once it spawns onto the map to start accelerating your experience and gold. That Abyssal Dragon will be so important and Singapore had such good objective control yesterday. Typically, the North American side, Allegiance, during the Valor series was very, very focused on tower control, which may make them vulnerable to a gold game from Singapore gaining the lead. You see North America actually looking to pressure toward the top side of the map, sending four members. Ari's got to be a little bit careful himself. Pew's able to get some damage. Tainted One's going to get stunned up there by rest on the Alice, is able to land it. It's going to force Tainted One's back underneath the tower. That's the early example of Pew's aggression already on the Lindis, taking advantage of control and damage powering through at least half of the HP bar of that Liliana. Do see Pew looking to clear out the Spirit Sentinel top toward the top side. El Preso coming on down, possibly going to look to reset. Pew going to come down toward that mid lane. Zay's looking for the Spear, not going to find it though. Zay's will be a key member of this team if he's able to find the big stuns, able to find the initiations, they have follow-up, but he's also got to be protected during these fights because he doesn't have a lot of mobility. Uh, Ayers has to be a bit careful here on that Joker. He's just looking to get some poke down onto North America, but if you get caught out there by rest, and I got to highlight that already, he's been able to land a lot of key stuns. If North America find a continual poke like this, they could just get the Abyssal for free because uh, Singapore don't have the HP bars to contest. Dusk is around the corner. Ours wants to come around toward the side. Sleepy actually goes on over the wall with the Moonfall, looking for First Blood, won't find it, but North America do secure the Abyssal Dragon. I like the early aggression, definitely showing off that they're in this game and they're here to push, keep Singapore back. That's all important. You want to play aggressive into this team. That's where NA feels like they're the strongest when it comes to early aggression. If you remember during the Valley, Valor series in North America, they had one of the quickest game times when it came to the season, somewhere around the lines of 11 minutes to 12 minutes. They like to end games fast. NA looking to even push up toward the jungle. Do not secure that Sage Golem, though. 
but the fact that they're trying means everything. Like you say, they're a very, very quick moving team. If Allegiance are on point, if North America are on point, they're doing stuff like that. Okay, I'm gonna go back up toward the top side of the map. Lots of players from both sides starting to look for a fight here up toward the top side. Hissy Fake goes on down. The Zenyo gonna come on in. Dusk wants no to join in on the party. Sleepy's gonna get caught out. That's gonna be oh. first blood going to Singapore, but KO wants to land some of his own. Two for one. Singapore are able to limp back underneath their tower. Very good call by Singapore, though, again, demonstrating their teamwork and game knowledge. This second they get what they want, they're able to smoothly and cleanly disengage walk away with the victory in the fight. And that's an early fight toward the top side of the map where NA does not come out on top. And that's going to be a key factor for them because they wanted to play aggressive, but Singapore are able to respond. Here's that first blood again. Watch El Stresso. He's going to be an easy first kill, theoretically, but he's able to fully disengage. And I really like that from the player, knowing the exact limits of Omen and how to zoom out of a space where he's threatened. Still see, though, four members of Singapore toward the top side of the map. It's a three-man roaming unit coming on through, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with North America in the river, especially around the Spirit Sentinel. NA, though, have priorities. They're going to go ahead, roam back toward this Abyssal Dragon that's about to spawn. Abyssal Dragon will be very important again because this gold game is eking back in favor of Singapore very slowly. They're out farming during this current phase. If North America can keep getting the major objectives, they'll maintain a gold lead and win most of these fights. Abyssal Dragon going to be started up here by North America. I want to try and bring it out of the pit. Dusk is over toward the side. Ayers has to be careful. He uses the flicker, but he's caught out. Nice. The Joker is down. Pew is able to pick up the kill. And now the Abyssal Dragon for the taking for North America. Easy pickup for North America, and that gives them the gold they need, as well as a oh, kill. Dusk, he's caught out toward the side. Doesn't have a whole lot of room to work with, but does nice get himself disengage. back under the tower. North America still applying the pressure. But look out from the river, TJ. You still have two members of Singapore looking to set up a trap. I was looking. Oh, yes, Pew. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. Gets taken down extremely low. Tayden Ones is going to go for the kill, and will find it. MTS wanting to run interference. Slippy, sleepy coming comes back and is able to trade oh, back a rest. kill. Rest, though, gets deleted. Moonfall, though, will respond with a kill. The double knockup, and this is the power of Sleepy. this pick. Sleepy is just popping off into a triple kill. A triple kill in the fight, and an extremely well-deserved one. He dominates with clever placement of the knockups. Every single ability he fired off slowed down the fight and gave his team a chance to react. And that's going to be a 2,000 gold lead for North America at six minutes to Abyssal Drakes on the table. The kill count in their favor. A good start to game one. And look at where the gold's concentrated on the North American side. It's exactly what you want. Pew is currently leading with 3k. The Crixie's not far behind. Yeah, but Pew, he led a little too far forward and got caught out. Yeah, and that was nice to see uh, Singapore well, very well versed at punishing mistakes like this. I really love that combo as well with the Omen setting up for the Riki shot from the Liliana. It's a very slow moving projectile, but they nailed it. And this is important for North America. Getting this first tier tower in the mid lane allows them to open up the jungle through the mid section of the map and continue to apply pressure for these Abyssal Dragons. Next one up in 15 seconds. Singapore may start to worry now because there's a Sleepy. lot of pressure going their way. Sleepy can't be sleeping like that early on. Maybe he fell asleep. First game of the day gets caught out in the jungle. Gives Singapore a little bit of a chance here. Apresso has to be careful. Dust comes in for the shield and wants to join in on the fight. They're going to be able Tainted. to take him down. Tainted Ones is able to survive. Pew gets dragged back into the fight. Singapore find two kills. That was so good from both Tainted, El Espresso, and Zayz. That's three people, not both, but every single one of them played right to the limits of their HP and was able to successfully back out. The communication on Singapore, just the team fight prowess from a newly formed team is really, really nice. But up in the top lane, TJ, North America are able to find two towers of their own. KL will fall, but That's opens up the map toward the top side. Absolutely a worthwhile trade for North America. Two towers for one kill is entirely acceptable and it even keeps the gold in their favor despite the fact that there's a two-kill lead in the scoreline to Singapore.
Oh, well, Rest gets poked there. Look at this, though. Singapore have the positioning around the Abyssal Dragon toward the bot side of the map. North America have kind of let this one go, it would seem. What yeah. is the play? I think North America maybe aren't quite paying attention to the bottom side of this map because they want pressure in the mid lane. And, well, that's a completely blown opportunity. Singapore now back with the gold lead, and that's going to get very close very quickly. So Singapore is able to keep this game pretty much tied at this point, only down by 500 gold and might be looking for a kill toward the bot lane. KO gets poked underneath his tower, but he's still safe. But look at this. Once again, Sleepy setting up a trap in the river, wants to go for the play. Rest is over there to the side and a pinch comes on down. Sleepy will find the kill There's onto the, the Joker. Part. Zayz gets taken down. Dust tries to get out of harm's <laughs> way. The auto is actually following him all the way back and he will get taken on down by Pew. Nicely done by Pew, a great executed gank there from North America. They find exactly what they want. Let's take a look at it again, because what they did here from Sleepy was perfect. He pops the Moonfall, Moonfall and chases down Aris. And in the meantime, Rest, the player we highlighted as someone who needed to excel here, does so, slowing down the fight and allowing the punish to come through once the Crixie is done with her primary task. A great performance so far. Eight assists out of the nine kills, really bumping up that kill participant that we saw during the regular season of the Valor series. And this is the North America that we are used to. Tainted One comes on over though. KO gets trapped and the Omen ultimate locks him down. Sleepy brings down the sky oh onto Dust God. though. Pew is able to secure the kill and Zayz is just getting chunked out. The stun is able to save him, but the rest of his team is going to fall. It's a three for one for North America. Rest and Sleepy, they have similar names. and You can see why they work so well together every single time that Alan Unless Hizzy Fit comes out, it's perfectly spaced almost every single time entirely within the circumference of Moonfall, which means anyone standing in it is slowed down, bogged down, and hammered by the magic damage that's amplified onto them. And that's going to be the high ground tower falling in the bot lane. Sleepy brings out the Moonfall once again, just looking to signal out members of Singapore. The second high ground tower now falling in mid lane. North America one game or one moment away from claiming the first game towards their quarterfinal dream. North America being the West Hope, it would seem KO toward the top side of the map, wanting to apply pressure on NA, starting to group up toward the top side here, could be looking for a Dark Slayer. All Singapore need to do is hold on. We're at the 10 minute mark, that's relatively late into a game and they're not at that much of a deficit. If they could find a few pinks here, slow down the pace, there's an opportunity for them to come back into this game. Well, North America, they keep setting up these traps through the river and it's been I'd, paying I'd off. That. The fact that North America is doing this is kind of a new addition to the Allegiance playstyle, I think, and I've loved every single instance of it because it's been so well executed. We were watching the boot camp and we were a bit worried about their synergy with Pew, but he's looked perfect, constantly in sync with his team. You can see Singapore, they're oh, looking to check this. and just the damage alone brings the Omen to half health. Oh, the knockup comes on down and Sleepy, he is ultimate for a reason. Dusk now inside the Moonfall, he has to run away. He came in toward the fight, but he had to back off immediately. I loved that. We were just talking up Pew's synergy with the team, his entrapments were perfectly timed. Maybe they don't find damage, but they all found slows, and that's the name of the game. When you have a Crixie, you want to slow down people's escape, keep them tied within the Moonfall so that you can find kills, so that you can convert for a Dark Slayer and maybe take your first game of this all-important BO3. 6,000 gold up at 12 minutes, 13 to 9, the kills for North America in game one looking to lock their slot into the knockout stage. Take a look on your mini-map. You see KO, he's caught out there. Three members of Singapore. What does North America do? They go straight up to the top side. Two people here to defend. Oh, tainted one. Oh, that's dangerous. This tower's gone. And that is going to be all the high ground towers now taken down by North America. Nothing but the core remaining for Singapore. That means three super minions now accompany every single North American wave. And they've got to be very, very very happy with that. And it's very rare we find teams bring back a game this dire. Singapore, though, 
They want to try. This is a team that has nothing to lose. You heard them say it themselves. They will play until their last dying breath. North America, though, they might be looking to finally put them into the ground. I've loved this from North America because it's such a different look from the team. They're so concentrated on tower control. They always had that in them. Here, though, they haven't even really worried about kills unless they can convert them to objectives. They are looking very much like some of the stronger Asian teams. You can see cutting those waves, trying to delay the game. Zayz has to run for his life, but he's got three members Go, of North America run. right on top of him. KO will pick up the kill. Slims will go down in the top lane. Zay's absent now for 34 seconds, and that makes this final base defense possibly very difficult indeed for Singapore. Sleepy is just looking to poke back Singapore. Now the minions starting to crash in. Dusk wants to lead the charge, but North America, they just go for the core, open up day three with a victory over Singapore, and take a 1-0 lead in the series. They don't look relaxed yet. Little bit of high fives going around. Sleepy happy with Pew, and I would yeah, be as well. Yeah, I would be too. He played pretty awesome. The whole team, that midsection of the map, performed beautifully. That was exactly what I was hoping for in my wildest dreams from North America. Exactly what I think many of the fans from North America wanted to see from the home team. You saw Singapore there looking a little bit stunned, a little bit unsure here as they start off day three, a little bit quiet it would be. They said they had nothing to lose. I think that was true yesterday. You could see it in how they played when they took a game against Thailand. When you take a game off against Thailand, though, surely something in your head goes, maybe we have a shot at this. And all of a sudden, all the nerves, all the pressure comes crashing back down. This is an even oh set. Goodness. They know it. But, oh, but let's have a word with Sleepy. Yeah, about to say 46.7% of the team's damage. A little bit ridiculous, TJ. Hello, Just a Crixie little bit. Alice Better. We're going to see a lot more of that in future games. It's fun. It's fast. It just rains down upon the enemy team. Let's take a look at the highlights. I loved every single time they had a team fight, they tried to get this combo working. We highlighted it even in the draft. The hissy fit goes out, and they instantly have a moonfall to follow up. Even when they don't have a direct hissy fit, which they normally tried, or it's split like this, they always had other characters applying slows. That's very useful when you have someone like MTS who has a slow. Somebody like the uh, Lindis coming through with this slow on the entrapment. Every single character can contribute to setting oh Sleepy God. up to do that. Just makes it rain. Even the auto attacks following Dusk all the way <laughs> to his doom. And then, of course, the final push where NA just secured the win. And I love this final push as well because it just shows what North America are focusing on. Take down the core, win the game. Take down the towers, win the game. The kills were relatively even, but North America didn't drop a single tower this game. And that's got to hurt for Singapore. They had one Abyssal Dragon for themselves. That's a little bit of a highlight, but they were able to trade back kills. It just became the objective game because North America, they were able to siege, seize the opportunities when they did find kills. Yeah, look at the KDA, not that different. There's definitely a deficit on the Singapore side, but if you just look at that screen, it's a pretty close game. It was only when we got to the latter half of the game when the towers just started crumbling. As you can see here, we are going to have a side swap this time around. Singapore going to be on your blue side with first pick. TJ, does this change up the draft? Singapore was very, very good in the drafting phase against Thailand, so I do think this is a possibility for them to take what they've learned in game number one and apply it vehemently to this drafting phase, maybe do something clever, and definitely break up that combo. Well, this is very important here because you come in to game two for North America. They need to win this series, but from our calculations, they have to end this series here if they want a shot to make it into the knockout stage. And they need to do it now because if they actually go two to one, they will have to play against Singapore one more time at the very end of the day because of the match rulings. Yeah, so just because of the games that were won and lost individually, this is going to be a tied set if they win it 2-1. They must win it 2-0. And North America have the opportunity to do it. Singapore, if they want to extend this series, they can do so just with one win. Well, here we go. Game two, pick or bans coming on through. Singapore going to be on your blue side. North America on your red side. TJ, the Crixie, I... D do you let it through? 
I actually don't mind letting through the Crixie. Yes, it's powerful, but it can be countered. What you absolutely must not let North America pick up is Crixie Alice. Because that gives Ress so many options, allows you to catch out members of Singapore, and then lay down that hissy fit, apply extra damage. Just the combo is lethal for Singapore, though. Going to be banning out the teamy. Instead, North America banning away the Superman on the red side. Yeah, I'm actually a bit questioning of this Grack ban right now, because I know hmm. you could put rest on Grack, but I don't specifically recall him being exceptional on him, so I, I genuinely don't think it's something that needs to be prioritized. For North America, going to be banning out the Lindis. And Singapore's final ban going to be the Flash. North America, Aram also going to be taken off the table. Singapore, they have options. What do they want to go for here first? Do you want to try and take the Alice away from North America? Do you want to try and secure one of those mages? TJ. I want to first pick Rixie. I, I, I think you have to. The problem is Tainted One uh, has definitely shown a preference towards high mobility mages. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to talk through with Tainted One if that's something he feels comfortable playing. And if it's not, then I guess you have to first pick Alice just to keep it away. Because you can't let both of those go over to North they America. They disagree. Okay. Singapore, they say it's a style of our own. It's going to be Rourke getting locked in. Rourke actually only at 22% win rate currently across nine matches. He's had an underwhelming performance here in the AWC, and I'm a little bit confused as to why you feel the need to first pick him. I feel like this is obvious for North America at this point. They can easily lock this in, but they might want to prioritize something else while it's available. MTS will be hovering over what I think is a great pickup, get the Malik away. Mm -hmm. I just, I have to wonder for Singapore if this is a deliberate strategy to shut down Pew. And if it is, I disagree with it because Pew could play so many more things. I don't think he's who you should be targeting. And you know, for North America, maybe they did their research. Maybe they looked at Tainted, Tainted One's hero pool and said, hey, you know what? We don't have to lock in the Crixie right away. Instead, pick up the Moloch, pick up that Alice for rest because he was able to perform so well in game one. Dusk over on Singapore was an insane Malik yesterday. Even in the games they lost. If he was on Malik, I was very impressed. Okay. Oh. All right. The so. bluff has been called. All right. Singapore, they say you left it open. We gave you the chance to take this one away. We're going to take it. Bring it in for Tainted Ones on the Crixie for North America. How do they respond? What does the plan hold for Sleepy? Well, he's got a viable mage. There certainly are plenty. The easy way to deal with a Crixie is to dive. We've seen that many times. What they have over on the North American side is a composition entirely capable of that. Pretty much saying, hey, you want to go ahead, try and bring out the Crixie. We're going to go ahead and just take you on down because Sleepy and KO lock in the Omen and the Liliana. If you want to stop the dive to come through on your Crixie, you need characters with a ton of knockups. Characters that can slow down a team fight and protect your glass cannon in the back. One of the characters that could do this would be an Arduin. And as well, I think maybe the Rourke actually finds more success here because he's able to find sustained fights onto people, amplifying his passive that, of course, allows him to do more damage as a fight goes on. The issue, though, for the Rourkes has been when teams play aggressive into them. And this is North America, a team that had an 11 to 12 minute game time on average in the Valor series. They will play aggressive and try and shut down that jungle. And I certainly would hope for nothing less. This Chargonar Arduin tank combo I like because it's the slows we were talking about. If you want to back up a Crixie, you need the characters that are both capable of defending the Crixie and the characters that are capable of keeping people within range of that Moonfall ultimate and the other high damage abilities. Now for North America, final pick coming on through, currently hovering the Slims. Slims. They wanted to go to, and it's going to get locked in. All right. Is that, surely that's not Pew on the Slims in the jungle? It might be. I'm excited. I've never seen the Slims from Pew. I'm sure he's played it, but it's never been in one of the games I've reviewed, and I'm very excited for that. We'll have to see how Pew is going to be able to perform on here. It actually looks like North America just chose in the order they wanted to because there's no <laughs> trades going on through. Everybody's got their hero. They're happy. They're ready for game two. And this is a very important one. You don't want to have to play another best of one at the end of the day. You want to try secure your spot in the knockout stage for tomorrow. This is, as a reminder, 
a very crucial game for North America. If they want this game to count as a win, securing them as the second seed in the group, they need to win 2-0. If they win 2-1 against Singapore, then we go to another game, a decider game, to break the tie because Singapore won a game earlier in this group against Thailand. Well, we'll have to see either way. We're going to go ahead, load on in for game two. And TJ, when I'm looking at these rosters, at these compositions for Singapore, it's about protecting Tainted Ones, trying to yep. allow Zays on the Rourke to get farmed. In North America, you know what? They just want to go for those dives, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And they've got a very good composition to do so. Watch that. Slims to find key stuns. Rest on the Alice will be laying out their hissy fits and other zoning tools to slow down the fights and allow rest to, or and allow the Slims to stay safe at the back. While they're doing that, you're going to have the Omen diving and isolating characters. Very, very good for pinning down a Crixie. And if you can find those engages, burn down Tainted Ones, who we haven't seen excel on a Glass Cannon-type mage character, we may see a very quick series indeed. Well, here we go. Game two between Sin Singapore and North America. North America with the advantage in the series. One, one to zero. One game away one from game qualification from knockout. to the quarterfinals. That's so important right now as they're going to go ahead go for the invade up toward the top side of the map with the Rourke. Meanwhile, Pew going to go ahead, trade the Mike Golem. I'm interested with Pew because this is more of a playmaking jungler rather than, you know, the lot of damage we'd see with like a Lindus. Yeah, and Pew is a very, very aggressive jungler as we've talked about previously. So I do wonder how this Slims is going to play. You can build Slims for a ton of damage, but when you do that, he tends to have to stay in a fight, engaged. You can see how Ooh, important that was. A snipe nice. from I take it all across back. the river. First blood for North America. You finding a crucial okay. spear throw. That was nuts. He called us out, TJ. He said, oh, they down if I'm going to be able to play the Slims. Well, first blood at the first minute here for North America. A beautiful way to start off game two. The key players to watch here are El Espresso in the split lane for me. His Irie is very, very good. Oh Here's my that stun again. Goodness, you saw how far that was, Pew. Come on, man. It's game two. We know you want to make it to the knockout stage, but you can't be playing dirty already like that. I, you got to save that, right? That's at least a quarterfinals play. Exactly. Those are the game turning plays. But down in bot lane, a response here from Singapore. They want to go for the play onto MTS, but they can't finish him off. No, MTS on the Malik is one of the tankier characters. And here's NA looking oh, for the punish. Able to find the spear. The combo comes through from the Alice, but there's no follow-up yet from North America. Instead, opting to try and push back Singapore into their jungle. Dragon is up, so any kills found here decide which team gets it. Most likely a very, very important indicative factor to which team takes the game. We can just see Rest right now. He's hiding in the river. He wants to try and find a member coming around to the side. Did and he, he actually just... stole oh, away the job. Mike Golem. Rest. We talked about him underperforming the first day, now coming on out, stealing away jungle. You know what they call Rest? Captain America, because he looks like him. <laughs> okay. El Espresso is going to be holding this lane in the meantime, and I do like that because he's the Irie we wanted to see play a little bit more aggressive. He's going to be the player I'm watching to dive in and burn down the back line. Well, Sleepy gets knocked out there, has to respect Tainted Ones, as he did get a nice Thick chunk of damage down onto that Liliana. KO going to go ahead, clear out the Seagull. It's a little bit slow here. Pew has the single spear kill coming out so far, but we haven't really seen him do a whole lot else. It looks like North America want to force plays, oh. and they do catch him out. Moonfall comes on down from Tainted Ones, but he's got three members of North America looking to hunt him on down. The Malak ultimate oh, looking for the zone, and that's going to be another knockup coming on through from Tainted Ones, but he gets stunned up and taken on down. He stayed entirely too long there. We wondered if maybe he was a little bit more comfortable on high mobility characters. I I definitely feel like we saw that change affect him there as he could not get out in time. Gets another spear onto the El Espresso below the tower. Tower's going to be taken down to about a third health. Singapore want to try and answer this. Zayz jumps in with that Rourke. Hissy Fit comes on down though and that's going to zone them away. Zoning them back. The Irie very nearly turned that fight around. El Espresso dives in but doesn't quite have enough damage on the Ryu ultimate yet. We saw a double stun and a big chunk of damage come from him. There it is again. Oh, gonna run back underneath his tower. 
You do see Pew. Is that just for light and clear? Yeah, I think he was just clearing out the wave because honestly, That's that nice tower. Because he's going to recall, so by the exactly. time he's back in the fight, it'll probably be most. Singapore, though, up. looking for a possible play here toward the bot side of the map. They wanted to go for that Abyssal Dragon, but had MTS come up to the river, just aggro it, say, hey, you know, you don't get an easy take here. And now, Looking to set up a trap for North America in the mid lane. Rest and Sleepy, they don't know what's waiting around the corner. They're going to show themselves finally, but they're playing a little far back, so they can't go for the play. This means, though, they can reset, go back to the Abyssal. NA have full vision on it, and they're coming in hot. MTS does have his ultimate available if he wants to go for the engage into the jungle. Deciding against it, Sleepy able to land the stun, but this does give North America position onto the Abyssal Dragon. They've just confirmed over on Singapore. They're going for the Abyssal, and they'll commit. Zay's Zay's have... Oh, the steal! In there, steals away the Abyssal Dragon. But they gotta be running for the hill. Shock comes oh. on down, lands onto three members. Get Moonfall out. comes back out from Tainted Ones. That's enough to force North America from continuing with the engage. That might be a tower picked up. It definitely should be in the top lane, but I think that's a worthwhile trade. It's gonna be two towers though for North America. One in bot lane, one toward the top. So feeling a little better about the trade, but still the Abyssal Dragon in Singapore's favor. Two towers shifts it. That's now the gold lead solidly in favor of NA again, and a whole bunch of map control as well. If you remember game number one, not a single tower fell on the North American side. If I'm Singapore, I want to start gaining that gold pressure right about now. North America looking to group up toward the mid lane. Want to go for a play. Tainted Ones is going to pop the Moonfall. And El Preso goes in, lands the three stun. But unfortunately, the rest of the team just isn't communicating, it seems, TJ, going all at once for these fights. Yeah, I really, really like the Singapore side being able to uh, fall back, disengage from fights that aren't theirs, but they need to be doing something else with this time. I want to see aggression come in when they see a commit from NA. If you know four people are up top, do this! Focus down isolated players. Uh, sleepy is going to be able to get back to safety, though. Underneath his tower, Rest is also toward the side with the stun available if he wants to try and disengage. North America toward the top side of the map might be looking for a play here onto El Espresso. MTS in the bot lane, just looking to clear out the waves. I think they kind of desperately want to shut well, down Singapore. Zay's, because Zay's for Singapore is doing quite well in gold right now on the Rourke. We have Dusk, who's made his way up toward the mid lane. And a, maybe nice they call. fell for the trap. The knockup is there. Elspresso jumps on to rest, able to lock him on down. Hissy Fit comes back on out. Tainted One still has the Moonfall. Finally, he's oh. going to pop it, but the shock comes on down. Two members of Singapore are going to fall. Beautiful fight start from Singapore, but then instantly that Hissy Fit comes through and splits it up, completely stopping Singapore in their tracks. They're not able to focus focus down any individual member of the opposing team, and as a result, have to retreat. Zero to six for North America. They have themselves three towers. Let's take another look, at this look here. Fit. This is a bit chaotic. Oh my god, that hissy fit was perfect. Then oh the shot comes through goodness. perfectly timed afterwards, and that moonfall was definitely a bit late in the fight. See, MTS looking to just jump on in. Dust gets deleted! <laughs> off the game files by Sleepy, and Pew is also going to go ahead and take the second tier tower. North America want to continue on this push, it would seem. Sleepy going to get knocked up, has to be a bit careful himself. He's taken down to about half health. I feel like now's a good time to remind everyone North America had the fastest game time in the entire Valor series. They speed run this video it. game. Looking to bring down the Hissy Fit in mid lane once again by rest, just using them to zone them off the tower, 4,000 gold lead, and now the Abyssal Dragon on the table for North America. Abyssal Dragon, if that's picked up, basically seals the gold lead. That's vast enough that North America don't need to worry about much for a while now. And for Dusk, he's trapped there by the Omen. The knockups coming on through, but three members of Saves. North America just pile in. Eighth kill of the game. Singapore is starting to look dire, TJ. Zayz was just in the bush watching. He just, he was enjoying himself. It was a treat and a show. He was just he, like, wow. He had his binoculars out. He was like, yeah, you're screwed, but nothing, <laughs> nothing I can do about that. Well, they do pick themselves up their first tower of the game up toward the top side of the map. But North Good America response. coming back on over, looking for El Preso. Rest is also there, going to pop down the hissy fit. Doesn't 
use it too effectively. Singapore just looking to back off. I like that. Good response. Wait, Omen. Oh, KO. KO. He what loses are you doing? his life, but he does pick up the high ground tower. That's huge. I was just about to praise Singapore for their map awareness. They go and lose a high ground tower to a single man. That's a little bit ugly, oh. and that's not prettier because Sim Singapore is starting to lose hope, it would seem. NA now with Super Minions coming through the bot lane, want to apply pressure, and even looking toward now the mid lane, the map control, the wave manipulation starting to show here as they now take down their seventh tower of the game. Just has to use the cull just to get out. In the meantime, Tainted Ones is using his wave clear smartly, slowing down the fight. This becomes to come back, you start looking for the 13 to 15 minute mark here. North America are solidly in the lead. Eight North America, the pressure coming out from the top lane. Meanwhile, down in bot, KO on the Omen, going to look to just push away, try and bring down Singapore, because someone has to answer this wave, or else the base is just going to get flooded. Sleepy over toward the side. Pew looking to find a pick with the spear. Damage coming down onto the fit. tower. Hizzy Fit comes on out. Tainted Ones. El Presso is on to the oh. back line. He gets rest pretty low, but he will fall as Pew goes Justice ultimate. Too far Tainted forward. Ones can't be part of this fight. He had to go back to the base. North America now take down two members of Singapore. They got minions in the bot lave. They're wanting to lock in in their ticket into the knockout stage. MGS dives on in. Tainted Ones gets deleted once again. And North America move on to the knockout stage. Do you hear that? I think it's a caca of a bald eagle. <laughs> Soaring in. They're into the quarterfinals. Luckily for them, they now have their shot of trying to climb to the grand final. But for Singapore, this team that was brought together at the last minute, you got to give them props for at least taking a game off Thailand. Absolutely. They showed up very, very well. There's Captain America himself giving everyone <laughs> a handshake. Wait, Chris Evans is here? TJ. No, it's just I, rest. Oh, OK. Can I at least get his autograph? Will he sign it like? I, I would get rest's autograph. Well, you can't blame him. He played much better this series. And I think that's a highlight for me because, again, high kill participation. We saw it more in the first game. But when you give him picks like this, Alice, he can look to make plays. Do Eagles call? <laughs> Do they screech? I think they might screech. It's all right. Everyone's got what I've meant. <laughs> Singapore, this was a rough set for them because North America clearly were taking them 100% seriously <laughs> and powering through again, sleepy. I don't think I need to say anything. The numbers speak for themselves. That's when you have, you know, like an omen on the team, also a marksman. You know, you can get some yep. damage. For Slow ones. people down. So much in the North American composition is centered around setting things up for Sleepy, and it worked so well in game one. There in game two, again, Sleepy is constantly having the benefit of slows, setting him up for big damage. And you saw the plan from North America from the beginning, looking to dive onto Tainted One so he couldn't do any damage with that Moonfall, get CC'd, get put into the ground. Shout out to Singapore for definitely contesting game one, definitely having good moments in game two. Again, they were a team that did not even qualify. They came in as a replacement for the Philippines roster from Clunch Guild, and they still showed up. They still definitely did their region proud. North America, though, they have a chance to make their region very proud indeed. Should they succeed in the quarterfinals tomorrow, they're going to have the opportunity to go all the way to the Chinese theater. That's a strong possibility. They do come out, though, as the second seed out of Group A. There's still a lot of tough teams they could get matched with. We'll see who they'll be playing against later A on. for America. A for America. Group A. <laughs> Your victors from it will be Thailand and North America. Those two teams are going through to the quarterfinals. You see there, North America enjoying that spicy 38 team KDA, only the one death. Feeling pretty confident about their chances as they move on. 10 minutes 39 game time. Keeping track with North America. I believe they had a 12 minute game average in Valor series. Yeah, it was around 11 and a half minutes, if I recall exactly. Yeah, so definitely on pace for them. A little bit quicker than normal, and I'm sure they're ecstatic with all that. Well, let's see how they are feeling, TJ. We're going to go ahead, throw it on over to Matt at the stage with an interview with the man himself, Rest. Thanks, TJ. Thanks, Opal. Rest, North America.
You're going to hang around in this thing a little bit longer then. We're in Los Angeles. I'm sure you guys would love to walk out onto the stage of the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood. To get there, you've got to get through the quarterfinals. You're in the quarterfinals. Congratulations. Thank you. Feels good? Yeah, it feels really good to be able to make it out of the group stage and make it to the quarterfinals. How did that game go compared to your expectations? You can't have known much about Singapore before we got here, having not seen them in the boot camp. Um, we didn't really know how much to expect. Um, we just watched the games of them versus Thailand, and we came the best prepared that we could have. Yeah. And the draft and everything went to plan. A 2-0 was what you expected. You didn't think you might get a tougher fight from Singapore? Um, the draft went very well, especially for us. We liked both the drafts. Um, and we know we needed the 2-0. That way we wouldn't have to go into the tiebreaker. So we just tried our hardest. Yeah, yeah that tiebreaker would have been something else. We would have gone to a further best of one if Singapore had managed to even get one game there. So quarterfinals then. That's got to feel good. Does it matter to you guys that we're here in America and you're doing this thing on home turf? Uh, yeah, it's nice to be in an area that we're familiar with uh, versus being in another country. Yeah. Well done. Quarter finalists, congratulations on that. Thailand go through as the top of Group A and North America.